Okay, so in a follow-up to yesterday's video on MX Linux, which I'm still really impressed with, uh, just a few things that I've found out um, in playing around with it since. Uh, so I mentioned about this being the way of shutting down, and it seems strange that you have to go from one corner to the other. Well, actually, all you have to do is right-click anywhere on the desktop, hit leave, and then you can go to shut down, reboot, or whatever. So nice and simple. Something I noted, there is no desktop. Uh, so you, I don't, well, this, this is actually on the desktop uh, and you can delete this and, and do what you want with it, uh, which is the little intro video. But uh, I've installed PyApps, which would have installed to the desktop. I've also put a folder on the desktop, but it's not there. Um, and I don't know if that's deliberate to keep it tidy, but if I right click and do file manager, uh, I can go to desktop here and you can see I've got a GameCube folder, I've got my commander Pi icon and my PyApps icon, but it doesn't show up on this desktop. Something I really liked as I was playing around with it, if I right click and do uh, appearance and conky, you can, if I move this, let's move this out of the way here. If I tick any of these, it gives you the conky overlay with all the sort of status and the temperature and, and various different things. But all of these different ticks are all different styles. So you can pick whichever one you want, which matches uh, what you want to do on your desktop. That one's a bit hard to read. But there's some really cool ones in here. I've done a video on installing Conky with Pi apps on Raspberry Pi uh, OS before, but uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't see this sort of option in here to to very easily change through. Maybe it's in there uh, and I just missed it, or whether or not the maker of this has decided to put everything in, and so you literally just have to tick it and it applies. But it's instant as well. It just comes up uh, and it's instant, and you can have two as well. Look. Very impressive. Now one of the things I couldn't do uh, was change the resolution and I've tried several different ways so I've gone into the terminal and I've done Raspi config and I changed the display options in there. I tried to go for 720 because I've installed the GameCube emulator on here and I wanted to try it because it works pretty well on Raspberry Pi but it works much better at 720 and even though I've changed the resolution, even though I've gone into config.txt and uh, tried to change things in there whatever I do hasn't worked and I, I can't remember what I last tried um, but uh, one of the things in there is the HDMI mode equals 19 which is 1280 by 720 um, but I've tried hashing out this uh, bringing it in and whatever I try doesn't seem to be able to change the resolution and wherever I look I can't find a way of changing display so we've got these options here uh, we've also got options in uh, settings here as well but all of the, I, I just couldn't find a way of changing it down to 720 and I would certainly do that not as an operating system because the operating system runs lovely and fast at 1080 but if I was going to run games on it I would tend to put my Pi at 720. So I'm going to reboot in Twister OS because I've already downloaded MX Linux on Twister OS and I want to write that to uh, an SD card just to show the initial setup and installing a few other apps for people who want to know. So let's right click and leave and shut down. So you can see I'm running Twister OS from an SSD drive. So that leaves the SD card slot free. Uh, and if you're wondering about this SD card slot, it's a, it's a breakout adapter. I've got a separate video on it, but it enables you to have the SD card slot on the same side as the USB sockets. So let's pop that in. And let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager, which I've already got installed. Choose OS, go down to custom. Mine's in my downloads folder, you can see here. So MX Fluxbox, hit open, choose SD. Well, this is the SD card that I've got in there. This is what Twister OS is running on the SSD. So click on the SD card and hit write. You can do this both ways around. So you can write it to an SSD drive from an SD card, or I could plug in another SSD drive, which is what I did yesterday. Uh, the other uh, video was on an SSD drive, so I wrote from an SSD to an SSD. So let's hit yes. Okay, so that's all done. So I can disconnect the SSD and boot from the SD card now. Okay, so it's all started up. You can see we've got a big thick black border. We can get rid of that, but let's just put in Raspberry, which is the default password. And if we click on the Raspberry in the dock here, we can go to configuration and go to display and disable overscan and hit OK. And yes to reboot. 
Okay, so first off, you can see down the bottom here that it's red, uh, 50 new updates available. Double click on that and then just hit upgrade and it will go ahead and do it all for you. Just need to put in that password and if you still haven't changed it, it's Raspberry. So that's all done. So let's install some apps that I think are essential on the Pi. So PyKiss first of all. Just do a search for PyKiss. Click on the GitHub. Scroll down till you get the installer script, which is here, and copy that without the dollar sign. Then if we open a terminal and paste that in, and that'll install PyKiss. So that's all done. So now we'll do a search for PyApps. And it's the top one here again. Scroll down two lines here. So first of all, we'll do the git clone one. Open a terminal and paste that in. And whilst that's doing that, let's copy the second line. and paste that in. Okay, so now we've got PyApps and PyKiss. I can close that down. So if I go into the apps here and just put Py in, you see PyKiss at the top and PyApps here. So with PyApps, I'm gonna install Commander Py. So Tools, Commander Py, and Plus. And you can also use PyApps to update these as well. And the same with removing. Okay, that's installed. So we can close that down. And actually while we're here, let's go for Py Power Tools as well, um, which is a great way of being able to back up. Uh, I've got a separate video on how to uh, back up an operating system, shrink it, and also write it to an SD card or an SSD. Uh, and Py Power Tools is an important part of that. And there's loads of other things in PyApps uh, that you can install with this, and it, it keeps on changing. So if we go back, uh, you've got editors, eye candy, games is one of my favorite. And so we've got things like Minecraft in there. Uh, we've got RetroPie, we've got Steam. Uh, it really is just an essential. But the thing is that PyApps tends to only work on 32-bit systems, and it tends to only work properly on Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, Twister OS, and now MX Linux. And the same thing applies to PyKiss. You might get it to install in other things, but then you find that when you actually try and use it, not very many things work because it's designed to work with Raspberry Pi OS. So let's close that one down. Let's go into PyKiss just to show you that. And here you can see ins install or compile games easily, install emulators uh, and tweaks and things like that. And so, for instance, on emulators, you can see uh, Amiberry. Uh, we've got... Uh, Box 86, we've got Commodore 64, we've got the GameCube emulator, uh, Dolphin, which is great, and all sorts of other things on there as well. And the last thing is Raspberry Pi Imager, and I'm gonna go into the add programs for that. So if I do add, add remove software, this is the same one that comes up in Raspberry Pi OS. And type in Imager and hit return. So we scroll all the way to the bottom and it appears at the top here, that Raspberry Pi Imager. So click apply, put your password in again. Okay, so that's all done. So we can close that down. And let's just show Imager. So Imager, click on that. And you can see there's all sorts you can install from this. So this is just a great tool to have on a Raspberry Pi. I, I can't understand why it doesn't come in Raspberry Pi OS. It's not a big install and uh, it is, it's an essential. So things like uh, other OSs. So you can see Risk OS, which I did recently. Uh, Ubuntu's on there as well. So let's go to Commander Pi. Well, let's do it this way. All apps, Commander Pi. I like having two ways to uh, find and access the apps. So uh, this is a great and very easy way to overclock. Obviously overclock at your own risk, but uh, I would generally do 2147. Uh, GPU frequency I'm not too worried about, so I just do 750. And the over voltage of eight tends to work best on my Pi 4 eight gig. So apply and reboot, and yes. Okay, and the last one I nearly forgot to install was NeoFetch. Uh, it's just a really good 
uh, useful tool. So sudo apt install neo fetch hit yes and type in neo fetch to launch it and there you go it tells you about your system uh, it tells you how long it's been up as well which is quite useful the resolution uh, it tells you that this is an 8 gig pi and it's showing as 22 it's overclocked at 2147 but it shows as 22 okay so i hope all this helped thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe